morning, and I had something on my heart that I felt like the Lord had uh, had given me, and I was in prayer yesterday, and just wanting to know what the mind of God was. I, I when I step up here, I, I don't take it lightly. I ask the Lord, give me the, the message that you want me to give to your people. I don't have nothing of my own. I don't have anything to say that's worth listening to. It's got to be what God's heart is. And I want to give to God's people what he wants them to hear. And uh, I was asking the Lord to give me, making sure that what I'd already had prepared was in fact what God wanted me to give. And, and I felt like the Lord laid this on my heart. And so I'm going to share from Psalms 55, if you'll look here with me. It's a Psalm of David. And he says in verse 1, he says, Give ear to my prayer, O God. And hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. Horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Salem. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Amen. Have you ever felt like that today? Have you ever felt like King David right there when he is writing and penning these words under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? He is fearful. He's trembling. He feels overwhelmed. He says in verse 5, he says, I wish I had wings like a dove and I could just fly away. All my problems could be left behind. I could just bury them in the sand. I could just fly away. Amen. He says, I, I would wander far off and I would just stay in the wilderness. I would... Isolate myself from all of my problems. He says, I wish I could just uh, hasten my escape from the storm and the tempest that is all around me. And I think we can feel that way in our heart. We, we cry out to God and we want our problems to be gone. We, we cry out to Him and Lord, just deliver me from this, this tempest that I'm in. Deliver me and set me free, O God. Let the storms that's raging, let the, the wind that's hitting me and the, and the persecution that's coming against me. He says, my heart is pained within me in verse 4. He says, terror of death have fallen upon me. And I, I think we need to understand here that, that David, he's not talking about just uh, the light things that can bother us in life. When David is writing and penning these psalms, his life is literally at stake. He is a wanted man. There are times where Saul is literally sending out armies looking for his life. I mean, we're not talking about tiddlywinks like we like to say around here. We're talking about his life blood is being sought after. He's hiding in caves like a dog. He's, he's not even allowed to enter into the cities of God because he is wanted by Saul. And people are looking for him. And yet the whole time he's been anointed king of Judah. And yet the armies of, of his own country are looking for his soul. And he cries out to God, Lord, I, I wish I could just fly away. I wish I could just abandon these things. I think so often we, we do what David is saying here. And we end up finding an escape in the world. We go on vacation. We Go to the Bahamas. We, we, we think, if I could just lay on that white sand. I've never been to the Bahamas, by the way, but I, I guess they have white sandy beaches. If I could just lay on the white sandy beaches and all of my problems could be gone. I could just isolate myself from the storm and the tempest. Or we, we uh, God forbid, but it's true, we turn to things of the world. I hope none of us here do, but... I know people who, even in the church, will, will turn to alcohol. 
little, a little sip of wine, a little, a little sip to just relax my, my, myself. God forbid that we turn to such a thing. But we look for things that the world can appease us and just give us a, a breath, we think. We just want to escape these trials and these tribulations. But if we are going through a trial and a storm today, I want to encourage us that it will not destroy you. If you are a child of God, it doesn't matter how bad the storm is, how much the wind is blowing in your face, God is allowing it for a purpose and a reason. And He will shelter you under His wings. Amen? If you run to Him, He will shelter you. He will be the one that guides you and protects you. And David would go on and he would speak of the enemy that his own friends had betrayed him. It wasn't like well, that it was the enemy that he hates and hates him. But he says, it was my own familiar friends turned against me. Amen. Amen. We're talking real here. We're talking that, that the storms that we're going through are real, that it was heartbreak, that it was people that we ate bread with, we sat across the same table with, we fellowship with, we loved them and we thought they loved us, but all of a sudden a knife entered into our back. We were betrayed. In fact, as the psalmist would even write that, though my father and my mother betray me, he says, yet the Lord will take up my cause. I don't know if you've ever been betrayed by those who seem to be the closest to you. Your own flesh and blood, they gave you life. Yet they turned against you and planted the knife in your back. But yet David, David would. He would say, my enemy has become my own household. He wanted to just run from his problems and flee from the terror that seemed to haunt him. But I want to take us our attention here to verse 16. Because in this psalm, there's a change that takes place. Verse 16, David says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Amen. Amen. This morning when I was asking the Lord, what do you want me to give to your people? What word do you have that you would want me to give? I just felt an overwhelming desire to encourage us, just call upon the name of God today. I don't know what your storm might be, and I don't know what trials you might all be going through. I don't know the, the people that might have sat across the table and, and they were your love, and yet now your heart is broken. Or I don't know what all circumstances you might feel like David, where he says, I wish I had wings like a dove and I could just leave this all behind. I wish I could just abandon everything in this life and go isolate myself on a little island somewhere or I could just go and I'd, I'd fly into the wilderness where no one could reach me and I could just be alone and, and bury all of my troubles and all of my problems but we know for a fact that that's not how life is amen we can try to bury our head in the sand but our fanny is still sticking up in the air amen we can try to isolate ourselves all we want so that we don't see the problems around us but they're still there. There's only one thing the child of God can do. And it's as David said, I will call upon God. Hallelujah. I will set my face upon the Lord. I will turn to Him. And he said, and the Lord will save me. He will set me free. God will take up my cause. And I thank God that when David penned these words and many more of the Psalms that he wrote, they were written with tears in his eyes with a broken heart. Some of them were written and recorded while he was even in a cave itself, hiding, trembling, fearful for his life. And yet he would call upon the name of the Lord, and God would hear him. God would take up his cause. I want to encourage you today, if you can't seem to, to see past the wind and the storms that's blowing in your face, if it seems like it's just so high that you wish you could just leave it all behind and abandon it, but you know it's impossible to do that. There's only one place the believer can turn to. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But you and I have to choose to, to turn to Him. Right. See, we put our faith in something. That's right. Because there's a lot of people who when, when storms get bad, they turn to the booze. And they're looking for a little bit of a relief. But just like anything in this world, morning comes and it wears off. Amen. And you're left again desolate. 
You're left again abandoned, looking yet for another fix me, another pick me up. It's the same thing with drugs. It's the same thing with anything that this life has. Nothing can sustain us, but Jesus is my sustainer. And I either tur turn and I put my faith in Him, or I put my faith in this world. But I wake up the next morning and I'm still going to be empty. I'm still going to see my problems are still there. And I'm still going to not understand how I can rise above my circumstances. So David said, I'm going to turn to God and He's going to save me. I'm going to have faith in what Christ has done. You see, Jesus has set me free. Jesus bore my problems upon His cross. He bore everything that I'm enduring now. He endured it. When we read it in the scriptures of the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is, is seeking God and He is in agony and He is in pain, and it says that even he, His sweat was like great drops of blood. You talk about absolute agony. You see, you aren't going through anything, and I am not going through anything that Jesus has not also gone through. And He had victory in it all. Even when all else forsook Him, just as David, his own familiar friend, turned against him. Is it the one that broke bread with him? And yet we would read from the scriptures that all forsook Jesus. Strike the shepherd and the sheep, sheep will scatter. No man stood with him that night. In fact, he said, all of you are clean. This is what he said that very night when he washed their feet. He says, all of you are clean except for one of you. One of you have the devil. And he was speaking of Judas who would betray him that very night. It says that when Jesus, because they all heard it and they said, Lord, is it us? Lord, who is it? Who has the devil? Who? I'll never betray you, Peter said. Who is it? That Peter motioned to John, ask him who it is. And John was sitting beside him, laying his head upon his chest. And he said, who is it, Lord? Who would betray you? Who's full of the devil in our midst? And Jesus said, it's the one that eats the sop that I give to you. And he dipped it and he handed it to Judas. And it says, the moment Judas ate it, the devil entered him. Satan entered him. And he went out into the dark, into the night, and betrayed the Lord. Sought counsel. Betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. The worst deal the man ever made in his life. How many times do we look to this world for help? And it's the worst thing that we could do. Because what does the world have to offer us? We betray the Lord with a kiss. With 30 pieces of silver in our, in our pocket. And then we realize what we've done. We cast it upon the floor as we realize in our agony that I've made the worst deal of my life. I traded everything that I could have had in heaven for something so trivial that it was in my hand one minute and it slips through the next. He says, here, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord will save me. He will take up my cause. I want to encourage you this morning. Lift your hands and praise God. Give Him praise. Call upon His name today. If you're going through a trial in your life, if you're going through tribulations and, and struggles, if, if the, the circumstances in this world, which it don't take much to look out into this world to see the agony this world is in. Why would you put your faith in that? It's falling apart all around us. Amen. Even our, even our government is falling apart. Even our, our, our entire world is in one big sinking ship. It's going down. And the only help and the only hope, this world's like the Titanic. It's sinking. So off in the distance is the ark. And we know that even the greatest flood that ever went upon the earth couldn't sink that ship. Amen. That's what they boasted of the Titanic and on its virgin voyage. It sunk in the, in the Atlantic. But the, the ark of God is the only refuge for you and I. Yeah. Go take refuge in the ark of Jesus Christ. He says, I'll turn to God and the Lord will save me. I want to encourage you today, no matter what you're going through, whether it's family issues, health issues, whether it's just agony in this world. You wake up and you see that, I mean, there are people battling depression and oppression every single morning. They don't even want to get up out of bed. They don't even want to swing their legs over. Praise God. Look to Jesus. He's your hope. 
Look to God because He will save you. Put your faith and trust in Him today. And that's the word that I had it on my heart to give to you today. I don't know what you're going through. And, and I don't know all the details and all that's going on in your heart and in your mind. But God does. He knows what's going on. He knows the trials and tribulations that you face. And I want to encourage you today. Put your hope in Jesus. You might be like David. Or your best friend betrayed you. Or your mother and your father has abandoned you. And David read it right. But the Lord will take up my cause. The Lord will lift me up. The Lord will save me in that hour of my need. Don't go flee into the wilderness. Don't look for the wings to just miraculously take you away from all of your problems. They don't happen. The problems still yet remain. They're still there in the morning. But when your faith is in Jesus Christ, you know your confidence is, is in Him and not your problems. And before long, you rise up with Eagle's wings, way above all of the shadows and all of the clouds and all of the turmoil of this world because your faith is in hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Look to God. He says it again in verse 16, As for me, I will call upon my God, and the Lord will save me. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord will save me. He gives you that promise today. Call upon God, and He will save you today. Amen. 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 Bow your heart with me if you would please. Hallelujah. This world Jesus promises you will have trials. He did not tell us that we would not suffer. He did not tell us that we wouldn't endure hardship or pain. In fact, he did the opposite. He promised that we would have trials. That we would have tribulations. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. John would tell us, what is it that has overcome the world? Even our faith. Who are we putting our faith in today? Who are we looking to, to give us the overcoming victory over the circumstances in our life? If we're looking to the world to solve us from the world's problems, that's silly. It's the world that produces the problems. The God of this world is Satan. How foolish to look to the world to solve our worldly problems. So rather I will look to Christ. I will look to Jesus and I'll put my faith in Him. Because He has overcome this world. My hope is not in this life. My hope is in Jesus. That whether I live or whether I die. I know I'm with Christ. I know where my faith needs to be. And I want to encourage you today, look to Jesus. And rise above your tribulations and your trials and your problems. But I will say this. We can be encouraged today. But tomorrow is a whole new day. The devil comes in and tries to tell you lies. We can be up one minute and down the next. So we have to keep continuously looking to Christ. Peter stepped out of the boat looking at Jesus, but he looked away and he sunk. That's what will happen when we don't look and keep our eyes resting upon Christ. In order for us to defy the things of this world, we can't look at the wind or the waves. We can't look at the circumstances. We can't look at the government. We can't look at the economy. We can't look at all of these things that are all around us. Viruses and pestilences. Corruption. Oh, guys, the corruption is beyond what we know. It is. If we, could, if we knew what God sees, we would collapse under the weight. When we read in the scriptures that it'll be as the days of Noah and the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Violence in the land, there was none that sought God. We might think to ourselves, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, yes, it is. God saw it, that it was violence in their heart continuously. It's that bad. Look to Jesus. Keep our eyes upon Him. He is truly the answer. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. Father, I just come to you. We as a body of believers, Lord, whether it's our children, grandchildren, jobs, our economy, whether it's our spirit, just feeling depressed and oppressed, our body being sick. Lord, whatever this life brings upon us, you have overcome it. You defeated it through the cross of Christ. And you have given us the earnest of the Spirit, the down payment. And we walk in that truth. We walk in that earnest of the Spirit, knowing that the power of God that if it is that good, if the Holy Spirit of God can set me free from my past sins and literally dry up my, my, my infirmities and literally set me free from addictions, if the power of Jesus Christ can literally do that, as, and that's just the down payment, how much glorious is the eternal life that I'm going to have with you? So we look to Jesus. And we know you will save us. Father, I pray right now for strength in the hearts of everyone here. Everyone under the sound of my voice, that Lord, you would lift them up and encourage them as we place our faith and trust in you. The wind may blow. We might feel the effects of the wind and the power of the wind against us. But we look to Jesus, our breaker. We look to Jesus, our shield and our buckler. We raise up the sword of the Spirit and we walk in the Word of God. We won't speak lies or, or things of unbelief, but we will speak the word of God. Lord, we put on the full armor of God, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are our everything. And we know the goodness of God is running after us. We know that you have thoughts of blessing us and looking after us. You don't want desire for one to perish, but that all would come to know you as Savior and Lord. So we look to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just sing this song. Let's just worship Him this morning. Just raise our hands and give Him glory. Praise His holy name.